obvious benefit. Pakistan, where suicide attacks are on the rise, was the world's deadliest country for the press in 2010, with eight journalists killed in connection with their work, a significant portion of the worldwide total of 44. In 2010, China's brutal suppression of ethnic journalism and Iran's sustained crackdown on critical voices have pushed their numbers of journalists in prison worldwide to its highest level since 1996, 145 journalists in total behind bars. 34 journalists imprisoned in each, in each country, China and Iran. Those two countries make up nearly half of the worldwide total. Um, thank you very much, Paul. And, uh, as recent events in Egypt have made clear, the stakes are enormous. Egyptian authorities clearly sought to curtail the ability of the press to cover the demonstrations in order to lay the groundwork for a violent assault on the protesters. That effort did not succeed. But as unrest spreads through the Middle East, so do attacks on journalists. In the last few days, we've documented press freedom violations in Yemen, Iran, Bahrain, Jordan, etc. We've been uh, making an effort to go through um, the cables as they're released and to uh, um, see if any uh, journalists uh, are named uh, in those cables and as, if as a result they could be endangered. We did uh, determine that that had occurred in a number of occasions. We did notify um, uh, WikiLeaks and those names uh, were largely redacted. Uh, so that's certainly positive, but we do have some concerns but we're trying to address those concerns in a very um, pragmatic way. The level of violence in Iraq, while still uh, very high, uh, has declined dramatically. I mean, Iraq was the most dangerous conflict that we had ever documented in our 30 years, and the level of violence now is greatly reduced.